Jackson and Julius Kizzy, and we have another guest on the show today, Julius. Another guest. Today. You want to you wanna introduce him this time? You can introduce him. I'll let you do the work. All right. So, you know, we just just had our athletic director, Bill mm -hmm. McGillis, come yes. in, and now we have Josh M. Lott. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you, Julius? I'm all right. I'm all right. Just trying to keep it easy in here because, you know, there's so much tension coming my way today. You know, so much he, tension. He, had, he asked all the intriguing questions <laughs> to be able to get us like, like he just didn't know anything. But, you know, <laughs> it's okay. But, Mr. Malai, um, talk about a little bit about what you do for um, Pine Belt Sports. Well, uh, I guess I'm not nearly as interesting as, as the people you were just talking about. <laughs> I have a lot of pressure to follow them up now. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm a sports editor with Pine Belt Sports, uh, which uh, – basically the sports department of three weekly newspapers, the Lamar Times, the Hattiesburg Post, and the Pedal News. And uh, we um, we focus on mostly prep coverage with some Southern Miss stuff. Uh, we like to think that we, we give the best high school sports coverage in the area. We've got eight, um, eight area high schools. And uh, we do stuff with our website, pinebeltsports.com and do stuff in the newspaper every week and we've got quarterly magazines that come out we just had our uh, spring magazine came out yesterday with right. our our uh, baseball outlook for the uh, the high school teams in the area um, so we can do a little self plug and say that just came out yesterday you right. can get it at Keith's Superstores anywhere in the Hattiesburg area and uh, yeah that's pretty much what I do that that's enough to keep me pretty busy okay now you just mentioned um, you had the quarterly to talk about high school baseball in the area um, what are some of the um, like the better team the more um, critical teams within the Pine Belt area this year well uh, you know this uh, this area is probably produces as good, good baseball as you'll see just about anywhere um, you know it shows with it with our teams winning state championships every year so uh, when you ask who the best teams are, you know, you can pretty much just look around and you'll find someone that's pretty good. Um, you know, obviously Oak Grove is coming off a state championship in baseball. Um, they uh, they lost a couple guys that Southern Miss fans are going to be getting pretty familiar with. Oh, that yeah. uh, That's going to be pretty tough very to replace. Excited, very excited. Yeah, two, two, two excellent kids and excellent baseball players. But um, so, so Oak Grove's got a little bit of work to do. They, they've got a, a senior Matthew Gidgery who's committed to Southern Miss he's gonna be coming here next year okay on um, their shortstop and uh, they've got some work to do to, to replace those guys but um Summerall has a ton of guys coming back uh, a lot of very good players and uh, w would have to be one of the favorites to win in class 3a they've, they've lost in the final on um, the last two years so they've got a little bit to prove a little bit of chip on their shoulder um, so they're they're probably the, the first place you look. Purvis is coming off kind of a surprise run to the championship, and they have virtually everybody coming back. So so um, you know they're probably a favorite in Class Four A or at least one of the favorites. Um, so those are probably the biggest two, and um, you know but but everybody's everybody's good. Um, Sacred Heart is is one A, but they're. Uh, they're a young program that's only been around for a handful of years, but they had their best year ever last year. They they return uh, just about everybody, and and they're going to be looking for a district title. So you know, there's there's a lot of good baseball here. Okay, talk a little bit about um like the basketball teams. Like I know Hattiesburg, Oak Grove. I know the um the actual tournament is going on. What's mm -hmm. about to go on right now? Like talk a little bit about those two teams for me. Yeah. Um, well, right now uh, they're they're uh, playing the quarterfinals up in up in Jackson, right. and uh, both Hattiesburg boys and girls both made it to the quarterfinals. So they're going to be playing Saturday. Uh, boys play in the morning, girls play at night, and they're both playing Starkville. Oh yeah, um, be big games. Yeah, big <laughs> definitely big games. I mean, once you get to this point in the season, everything's a big game, and and uh, you know, there's there's no easy teams. Uh, and just win or go home. Yep, yep. And I mean, this is—it's not not an area that's really known for its basketball. Obviously, Jackson has has dominated that uh, for a long time. Uh, I mean, as far as here, Hattiesburg is is as tradition rich as it comes basketball wise, uh, and and so it's not really a surprise for them to to be the team that's in this position. Um, you know, both those teams uh, have have had very good seasons, and um, you know, I don't know what 
what their realistic chances are uh, right now. I don't know that anybody would call them a, a title contender, but all you need to do is get there. That's what any coach will tell you. You get there, and then anything can happen. So, you know, they put themselves in that position um, to, to do that. Uh, the boys did it by beating Oak Grove. The girls did it by beating Petals. So there were some fun rivalry games to get to this point. And, uh, you know, they, they've got the shot, and that's all you can really ask for, I guess. Right. Okay. So now I've um now we've worked together. I mean, I've did some mm -hmm. columns for you um in terms of writing for the newspaper. We and worked stuff. together. Yeah. Of course we I, worked. You, together. you forgot about me, wasn't it? No, I didn't. Forget That's cool because you know I ain't got to talk it. <laughs> how, how you doing, Josh? I'm doing good, Julius. Talk about the Southern Miss scene in your eyes. How do you feel? How do you feel about the baseball team? How do you feel where the football team is going? You know, any any quick thoughts about uh, Southern Miss? Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know that I that I. Uh, have much to say that hasn't been said before, but I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's one of those things where, um, you know, the the university athletic department as a whole has been through a, a lot in recent years. Um, so there's there's a lot of a lot of work to do in a lot of areas, and obviously uh, with Bill McGillis on here talking about it just a, a few minutes ago, um, obviously he's optimistic. That's his job to, if he's, if he's not optimistic, then you worry because, you know, he's, supposed to be putting the, prog uh, the programs in a position to, to, be to succeed. And, right. um, so, you know, uh, but uh, obviously there's a, a lot of work to be done. Um, you know, everybody, the football team is obviously the one that gets the most uh, uh, attention. And, um, you know, last year looked like a, a little bit of a step in the right direction. Um, I think we'll see a lot more next year where maybe – you would think being optimistic that some of the things that maybe you don't see on the surface that we're getting better will start to come through next year. Right. Uh, so I think one of those things where you really, you talk about giving coaches three to four years and I think you really have to do that. Um, and then you can realistically assess, you know, is Southern Miss football in a better position? Obviously it didn't take very long to, to get, um, from a strong position to uh, a really big hole. So it, it's always going to take longer to build up the opposite way than it is to, to fall down. But it seems like maybe there's there's some hope there, at least for a little bit, and I think we'll see over the next year or two whether those, uh, those things take root or whether um, there's going to have to be some other things that happen, I guess. I feel like... I feel like Doc Sadler has been given such an unfair hand this year with all the sanctions and all the people leaving for personal reasons like Dallas England and Shadow Miller Hustle for when he left. Do you feel like Doc Sadler is the right coach to bring Southern Miss back to the top throughout this, uh, this throughout this journey that is the NCAA investigation? It's one of those things where um, I think anybody that blames Doc Sadler or has lost faith in him hasn't really been Given paying attention. Right. Um, he got thrown into such a strange situation that obviously uh, nobody could have really seen that uh, you almost just have to forget about this year, and, um, especially when it comes to assessing what he's doing. Do I think that he's the right guy? Uh, I don't know that I really have any idea at this point. That's how kind of a wash the season has been with everything that's been out of his hands and out of his control. Um, you know, he's... He's had successful basketball programs before. There's no reason to think that at this level in Conference USA that he can't have a successful uh, basketball program. Mm -hmm. um, are we in the right direction? I don't know. We, <laughs> you know, he had to contend with so many so many things this year that uh, you almost have to give him a a couple years down the line from even now before you can have any idea. Uh, you know. I've, you have to feel for him. Um, if any, I don't know that any coach would have taken that job if they had known if they had what they were about to have to go through. Yeah, exactly. it would have. Um, so he he's kind of stuck with that, uh, and and now we get to see what what he can do with it. Um, you know, I imagine it, it'll be one of the better coaching jobs that he's done in his career if he can if he can get it back going um, and, and lift it back up again. All right, so um, we kind of touched on the football and basketball program. Talk about your take on um, some Miss baseball team and softball team. I know we just had Coach Ho to um, leave off of the show. Mm -hmm. Talk about how much they bring to the, like the Hattiesburg community in terms of like winning and you know restoring that winning attitude in Hattiesburg. Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, I think right now with um, with the the shape that football and, and basketball are in, 
uh, the university and the community here has to rely on those those other sports even more to kind of uh, foster a, any positivity and any uh, you know winning notion right now. Um, so those those thing those sports are really important right now because uh, you're not getting. Uh, they're, they're pretty much all we got right yeah, now. Yeah, right. I mean you're not getting that if you go to a, a basketball game and there's a, there's a couple hundred people in the stands and, and you can barely put enough guys on the court to field the team at the end of the game. Uh, you know, people are looking to baseball and to softball to have something to cheer for, and uh, so th there's a lot of responsibility with this with those teams right now to to be able to uh, give that back to to the the fans a little bit. I think. All right, Mr. Malat, we would like to thank you for coming on the show today. We really, really, really appreciate it. Um, all right, listeners, we're gonna take another short break and leave you with the song. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you one question. Yeah. Is it gonna be tough? Who do you who do you feel like? Is more right in our in our questions. Do you feel like Wilson is is more right, or do you feel like I'm more right? Because I feel like I ask hard questions, but I feel like it's it's warranted that I ask the hard questions because he's too nice. No, I can ask the hard questions, but I know you're gonna. You're beat too me. nice. No, you're, you're just gonna, too nice. You're gonna beat me to the hard questions because you know, you're too nice. We're gonna say well, that. Guys, at, we're gonna say that at the end. There's a reason that they that there's good cop bad cop. If if he's not plying people, they're not gonna feel. They're not going to be in a good mood when you grill them, mm -hmm. and they're not going. They're they're just going to shut down. Right. So you have to prepare. So you guys, you guys have to work together exactly. to get it to happen. He's just too nice. That's why you don't start the interview with the toughest question. Exactly. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. I know. You got to warm up the people, but not saying, "Oh, how how are we going to do this season?" Like you have to warm up and say, <laughs> "How do you do it?" You know, what do you? What is your take on the season? I understand. I understand. But you know, thank you, thank you, Josh, for coming Absolutely, on the show. Guys, and you really give your insight. I really appreciate it. All right, listen.